Somebody just credit just said congrats on Blue Beetle to me. People don't know. People don't know. Nobody knows. Everybody knows. Get your special sock out, nerds. Um, I would love to start here. Um, we wouldn't be sitting here um, if the leaked Deadpool footage didn't get out uh, years ago. I ate some bananas. B a n a n a s. Oh, hello there. Um, do you remember seeing that for the first time? And, and as a Marvel president now at this point, you can't condone leaked footage, but ultimately that got us here. Uh, it, yes, and, it, and, I, and I saw that footage and experienced that as, as you did, just as an outsider and yeah. as a fan looking at it. Um, and I still don't know the true story of it, by the way. <laughs> I've asked Ryan. He doesn't really tell me. No. Um, but it was, uh, uh, if it was a masterful play, then it was masterful. Yeah. And I'm glad they did it, because as you say, here we are. Here we are. I'm the Messiah. I am Marvel Jesus. Audience is going to learn about the concept of an anchor being. Um, who is the anchor being of Earth 616? Uh, I will not tell you that, but I love that you asked, and I love that that in just these 37 minutes that that term has uh, has grabbed onto the imagination of, of people. The TVA is a fascinating concept. Yes, There's so I agree much to with explore you. with that. I agree 100%. Um, Marvel's production schedule, four movies in 2021, three in 2022 and 2023, one this year. Um, creatively, strategically, what did that allow you guys time to do at Marvel Studios? Well, a lot of those, um, the cadence that you just mentioned, a lot of that was because of the pandemic and because of the strike. Sure. Um, as often happens, sometimes it, it what seems like what seems like um, uh, a disadvantage to have to be able to shuffle around ends up being something that, that is good. And the notion that we have one movie to focus on this year, mm -hmm. um, I think is great, not just internally for us, but for audiences. Mm -hmm. We'd had we'd had so many projects between the between the movies and the D Disney Plus series that I think it's nice to be able to focus on on an event. Sure. Because to me, that's what every movie of ours should be, is, is an event. Yeah. Um, that, that, that grabs onto the imagination of the world. I want to show you something huge. I don't think you're supposed to say that. Obviously, you guys have worked uh, several times, uh, well, not Marvel Studios, but, but bringing the Fantastic Four to life uh, through visual effects. And, you know, you've seen technology evolve over the years. I'm curious what you can even just speak to in terms of how their power is going to be realized on screen and some of the things that maybe you're working on progressively to bring them to life. Things like The Thing and The Human Torch. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Matt Shackman is very, very good at utilizing, uh, at utilizing visual effects. The most important thing for us, stretching's got to look cool, rocky exterior of the thing has got to look cool, the flames got to look cool, invisible. It's all about the character. Sure. It's all about the family. It's all about that dynamic. So the minute we got that cast that we've announced signed up, 90% of the work was done. Right. That is what the focus is of the movie. I could tell you have a sort of don't get too close, I'll only break your heart vibe going here. Um, and you were really excited to talk about on the official Marvel podcast about uh, that alternate city that existed there. Yes. It seems like this is yes. opening up a brand new landscape for you guys to play around in. A, a literal new universe, yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's really great. What a clever way to get into it. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. I have to ask you what it's like to bring Harrison Ford into the MCU. Uh, it is great, and I'm sure we'll we'll talk more about that for Captain America: Brave New World. But that trailer has just come out, and I think people get to see that side of uh, of Harrison. And uh, we, we're working on more pieces that will be unveiled uh, between now and the movie coming out. That is even better. It is uh, surreal to <laughs> to work with uh, to work with him. Yeah, that's got to be a dream. He's incredible, and he's everything everybody wants to believe he is. Right, still yes. to this day. I mean, yes. I would assume you had a list of people crossing off of like to bring in and he had to be near the top. Uh, absolutely, I was very jealous. Uh, uh, my friend John Favreau worked with him on a movie called uh, Cowboys and Aliens yeah. after Iron Man. Yeah. And I thought that's so cool. Are we ever gonna be able to ever be able to do it? Right. And now uh, I went to dinner with him in, in Atlanta. We were filming and I went to the restaurant and I and I said, oh, I'm, I'm meeting somebody. I think he's using a secret name or I don't know what secret name is. And they go, Harrison Ford? I said, yeah. <laughs> He doesn't use secret names. He doesn't care. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I am soaking wet right now. You mentioned that there's a script for Spider-Man 4 coming, which is really exciting. I know people want news on that. Um, we love what John Watts has done. Would you like him to continue, or are you looking for a fresh voice? Uh, we, we, we love John. John did three of the best Spider-Man films ever for us. Uh, he's got lots of things going on now, uh, so we'll probably be looking for, looking for, uh, for somebody else, just because he's... He's uh, busy. Yeah, Star Wars, and I never got a chance to thank you for No Way Home. By the way, oh. um, it was you know such a busy time and so much yes. going on, and that yes. movie 
I can't tell you what that movie means to me. I mean, I watch it on a regular basis and I can't believe it exists. That's great. It's me neither. It's so <laughs> fantastic. Stop it. I was lucky enough to go to Cleveland last month and watch James film Superman. Oh, cool. And I know, obviously, your love for the Donners uh, and, and your love for James. Um, yep. Have you seen anything that he's been doing over there? What are your thoughts on him and I've Superman? I've seen the paparazzi shots that I'm sure everybody else has seen. Yeah. Uh, and it looks great to me. Yeah. James is the best. What is your thought in terms of like uh, how iron sharpens steel? Um, you know, is it good for Marvel Studios if DC is equally competitive for you guys at the time? Uh, yes, I've always said yes. Mm -hmm. Because number one, I want to see great movies. And number two, I want there to be great movies in theaters for audiences to go and in between our movies be reminded that going to going to the going to the movies is a is an incredible and singular emotional activity. Mm -hmm. um, so the more great movies there are, Twisters this weekend is over uh, overperforming. I haven't sure. seen it yet, but I can't wait to. So that's that's exciting. And then when it comes to the to uh, to uh, the distinguished competition, as they say. A lot of people don't know the difference. Yeah. Somebody just just said, congrats on Blue Beetle to me. People don't know. People don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, you know, but, and one of the things, and I love hearing you say this the other day about superheroes not being necessarily a genre of the stuff, that they play around in different genres. There's this concept that, like, there's a fatigue out there. Can you just comment on, on your thoughts on the idea of superhero movies and a fatigue? Well, it, I've always said, I, you know, starting in 2003, when there were three Marvel films released yeah. before Marvel Studios, people started asking about fatigue. And, and I've always believed if the movies are unique and the movies are fun and the movies are worthwhile, mm -hmm. there won't be that fatigue. I think over the past few years, certainly with the amount of projects we'd had at, between Disney Plus and the features, there was, a, there was um, an overabundance, let's say. Mm -hmm of product that I think people people thought, geez, I, I love them all, I want to catch up on them all, but this is a lot to, this is a lot to ingest. Yeah. Um, and as you've already talked about with our cadence, slowing that down, making sure each thing is special, each thing has the time internally to, uh, to be developed right, which mm. is why our Blade movie is frustratingly taking so uh, yeah, long right. to make sure we get it right. Mm. Um, and then when they're done, like Deadpool and Wolverine, that can really be the focus. I'm glad you mentioned Blade. Is it really as complicated behind the scenes? Like from the outside in, we're all kind of looking at it like, what's going on with that? But is it just, this is part of the process? It's part of the process. And when you have a character as famous as Blade and an actor as famous as Mahershala, um, everything that happens just gets a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure you've heard us talk about we were struggling uh, finding the perfect reason for Deadpool to exist, the yeah. third Deadpool movie, then MCU, and then Hugh Jackman called. Yeah. And it fell into place. Yeah, yeah. Right? Sometimes you need that magic thing that falls into place. Right. And sometimes it happens. Uh, sometimes it takes a day. Sometimes it takes two years. Sometimes it, it takes 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's, but that's what you really should be waiting for until you make something. Don't just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. Nope, I'm actually okay. Thank you very much.